Enter the story. Enter the place you belong. Not just looking up. Tonight is Maundy Thursday, a celebration of the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his friends. The service will include communion, so we invite you to prepare a piece of bread of any kind and a beverage of any kind so that you can take part in communion when that time comes. Let us join our hearts and minds for a time of worship. been on quite a journey during Lent. We have put ourselves in the stories of Holy Week for some time now because they are important to our faith journey and to our identity as followers of Jesus. We have frozen moments in the gospel narratives of Holy Week so we might put ourselves in the picture and enter the passion of Jesus. Enter, enter the story, enter the place you belong, not just looking on, for this is your story. Tonight, the characters we've met over the last weeks will now step into our picture. We will hear from them again, but this time they come to us knowing the rest of the story. Holy Week is a time to mourn the continued suffering in the world, but we know the surprise twist of the story of Jesus. We are Easter people. We live in the post-resurrection era. We can follow the command of Jesus to share the good news of resurrection hope. I was the one on the ledge overlooking the parade of Jesus when he came into Jerusalem. I was fascinated with what I had heard about Jesus, but I was also scared. I showed up that day to watch his entrance, 
And then things got more intense in Jerusalem that week. I don't even think the word intense covers it. It was horrifying. Roman executions are always gruesome, but this one held the message, see what we do with so-called saviors. The morning of that parade, the crowd was chanting, Hosanna, which means save us. As if a man on a donkey could free us from this oppressive Roman regime. Looking back on it now, it turns out that the donkey was part of his message fighting evil with the ways of evil, answering might with might cannot lead to redemption. But coming into the picture and showing us a different way to have power, the way of mercy and compassion, nonviolence and forgiveness, that is what God requires. And it changes things. Because in the end, no matter how deadly things are, no matter how loud the voices of hatred and fear are, resurrected life comes in the light of love. We use our lives to show the world a different way. This is the rest of the story. Let's have a moment of silence. I invite you to think about something that fills you with fear or even loathing. Ask Jesus to save you from it and show you a different way. Jesus, Savior on a humble donkey, Empty us of our need for revenge, the need to answer hatred with hatred. Let your compassion be our compassion. Amen. When Jesus turned over the tables in the temple, I was filled with fear and frustration. I was afraid he was about to get himself killed. And... Well, he did. It was the risk he took. He showed us that pursuing justice is risky. In fact, it still is. You may have seen many bold and righteous leaders cut down since my time. I was so angry at the events that unfolded that week, angry at the way things are. Yes, it is part of the redemption story to feel the anger at the way things are and try to do something about it. But I know it's hard to see if anything we do is making a difference when the pain continues. I certainly felt that there was no hope that last week in Jerusalem, especially as as we watched our beloved one die on that Roman executioner's cross. But then there was the rest of the story, and what rose up out of that death was something that gave us all the courage we needed to live on and spread the good news that death will not win. And I see you standing here. I know that what truly lives on outlasts any political power, any era. You are part of the rest of my story, of Jesus' story. That is the long arc of justice. Let's have a moment of silence. I invite you to imagine that your actions toward a more just world, though they may seem small, are part of the rest of the story for humanity. Ask Jesus to show you what you can do out in this world to be part of the picture of justice. Jesus of righteous anger, give us courage to be part of the arc of justice that you proclaim. Let your passion be our passion. Amen. I'm the one who was in charge of keeping an eye on Jesus whenever he showed up at the temple to teach that week. 
it was fascinating to see how the crowds adored him. And then, when it looked like he really was going to get in serious trouble, how some people got really frightened and started staying away or even turning on him. But I have to say, if you are someone whose life depends on following the rules, hiding your true feelings or true identity for fear of punishment, it's not an easy thing to stay strong. Fear is a powerful thing. Fear keeps us all small and sometimes silent when we should speak up. Fear is a terrible master. I even saw some of his closest friends, his disciples, deny that they knew him after he was arrested. Even the best of us can succumb to fear. I can tell you that even as a Roman official, I felt the fear that day as he was dying. What has become of a society in which a teacher, a rabbi, a nonviolent person is deemed such a threat to the state that they can't tolerate them, so threatening that they must be extinguished? Are we so fragile that we can't even engage one another without resorting to death? Well, this seems to be a question for your time and perhaps for all times. Can the rest of the story in that fateful week allow us some hope that we can rise again, rise above, rise up from the ashes of our own dysfunction? Let's have another moment of silence. I invite you to imagine what it could be like if we transformed the way we deal with our differences. Ask Jesus to teach your heart to love someone who is different from you that you struggle to understand. Rabbi, teacher, Jesus, teach us to love beyond our differences, to look closely at how we might change the rest of the story. Let your understanding be our understanding. Amen.
come together around the table just as we did so many times. We disciples used to eat with Jesus and sometimes an unexpected guest would show up. I told you the story of the woman who came in that night during the last week. She had that expensive oil and I admit that we complained to Jesus about it. We were concerned about money and survival. Then Jesus reminded us that money and survival are not the most important things in the world. Actually, how we spend our time and love while we are here, that's what we should be concerned about. And then the rest of the story happened that week. Jesus was right. She was preparing him for his burial. We saw his earthly body violated, tortured, and killed. And we quickly prepared his body in the traditional ways it's done with burial oils and linen cloths before laying his body in the tomb. In fact, it was the linen wraps left behind three days later that gave the evidence that the tomb could not hold him, that death could not hold him. It makes me wonder what kind of wrapping covers our own eyes right now so that we cannot see the true and pleasant blessings of our lives. How much does our worry about the future steal from the present we have before us? Let's have a moment of silence. I invite you to recall the blessings of your life right now. Ask Jesus to help ease your worry of the future so that you can live life fully right now. Jesus Christ, anointed one, open our eyes and help us shed the death clothes we are already wearing. Let us see the light of new life in every single day we live. Let your abundant hope be our abundant hope. Amen. <laughs> My life since that night in the upper room was never the same. As the servant assigned to the room, I witnessed an amazing act of servanthood unlike anything I'd ever known. The honored guest took my towel and wrapped it around his waist and took on the duty of washing feet that was my lot in life, my station, one that was supposed to define my life forever. Everyone in that room was stunned, <clears throat> but Jesus didn't stop there. He went through more of the rituals of Jewish meals, adding in strange words and prophecies that had everyone on edge. It turns out he knew just what he was doing because his words became eerily true as we all witnessed the breaking of his body and the pouring out of his blood in the days after the meal. He dared to speak of a new kind of relationship where all people are of sacred worth, of equal stature. And this was such a threat to the status quo that he was killed for it. But here you are, and I see now that the rest of the story shows up whenever you gather around tables where all are invited to be present and all can feast on the love and grace that is each person's birthright as a child of God. I see a vision of a time and place where even I have a place at the table too. O oh Lord of light, of form and hue, who has created all things new, shapeless clay an instrument on which you play God of the dance that planets tread who walks beside and soars ahead oh let me move to worship thee 
Come, Holy Spirit, dance with me. Let us prepare to go deeper into the story of Jesus and his final days. Let us share together the sacrament of communion. Let us thank God. Look to Jesus who walked among us as a brother and showed us the way to the Father. May, May love, love and, and grace, grace be, be with, with us, us all. all. Let us lift our hearts to God. It is, it is right, right and, and good, good to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, praise. and praise. It is a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, divine artist, creator of heaven and earth. Your brush strokes touch the whole of your palette, making all of creation beautiful and filled with your colorful images. You breathed into us the breath of life and framed us within the story of your love. When we turn away and our love fades like a work of art long neglected, you restore us to our original glory. You delivered us from captivity and made a covenant to be our God. You spoke to us through your prophets and made a way for us when there was no way. With your people here on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy holy holy, 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 holy God, God of, of power and might, and might. With, with heaven, heaven we, we sing of your, of your glory, glory. With, hosannas with hosannas to our, our God. God. Blessed, Blessed is the, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. In holy wisdom and love, you knew that we needed to encounter you in human form. You zoomed in on the cries of your people and decided to meet us face to face. Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us, us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our debts as we forgive, forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Your Holy Spirit anointed Jesus to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. In spite of the risk, he taught people in small groups and in crowds, overturning their thinking just as he overturned tables in the temple. He taught that money is of the world, but spirit is of God. He gave the greatest commandment, and he valued the gift of a poor widow. Amen. In that last week, events led to a moment in which Jesus surrounded himself with his dearest friends, and even with the one who would betray him. Time stood still. Life in stark relief. As he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In this moment, we remember the stories of Jesus Christ and we offer ourselves as part of the story of sacrifice and salvation. We proclaim together the great mystery of faith. Christ Christ has has died. died. Christ Christ is is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on each of us and on these good gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the love of Christ which we take into ourselves, making us one with the body of Christ for the world that is redeemed by this love. Amen. This bread is the body of Christ. In remembrance of him, take and eat. This cup is the new covenant in the blood of Christ. In remembrance of him, take and drink. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for simple things made sacred, for moments in time that are captured and framed and passed on to us. We thank you for this time of unity with you in body and spirit. Amen. O Lord of beauty, Lord of art, who gives us song, Passion. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. 
Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face saying, is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, if I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong, but if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate answered him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. <clears throat> Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, 
We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend to the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then they handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put, in, put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. I was one of those who fell asleep in the garden. Remember me? Later, as I looked up at the cross where Jesus was dying, I was overcome with remorse that I could not even stay awake at the most important moment of my life, a moment when perhaps I could have protected him. But then he had plenty of opportunity to protect himself, and yet he chose to speak the truth. Ours was not the only time in history when the truth was difficult to hear. Truth and goodness seems to remain elusive in most time periods, even the one you live in. Perhaps we continue to follow Jesus, who said that the truth, the way, the life, is that which leads to freedom, not captivity. 
that which gives life rather than takes it away, and that which proclaims love rather than hatred, that which feeds people, not starves them in body or spirit, that which builds community, not breaks it down, and that which takes suffering and transforms it, creating beauty in the world and life as a work of art. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? Red 
this season of Lent, we've seen what happens when we put a frame around life. We zoom in and find there is good news. We find the rest of the story. It will all be okay. Jesus is with us always, forever. Death serves to remind us that life is beautiful. That's why we place flowers on a grave or place a memorial, because it reminds us of the beauty of a life lived with attention and intention. May you be blessed by the sacred frames that surround the moments of your life that you dare not miss. Amen.